interruption. Alistair. Thank you, Nick. Um, well, what else can I say? I'm going to echo pretty much what everyone's been said uh, today. Um, one thing I'd like to do to start off with is this idea that certainly in a lot of the speeches that I make, uh, that I've made for this library campaign, I've used a lot of symbolism. You know, libraries are temples, libraries are sanctuaries, they're beacons. But there's more than just symbolism. They actually are the bricks and mortar uh, provision of loads of services to everybody at all ages. I got into this campaign and started a petition because uh, my daughter, who's 18 months now, coming up to two, uh, two years. Um, she uses the library uh, to lend books personally, but also uh, for stay and play, for grind time. Her nursery takes her there with all the other children. It's an opportunity for her to socialise and to us to socialise. They are um, community centres that go beyond just um, the, uh, the actual books themselves. Um, a lot of people said, um, and you said about the idea that book numbers for the is something that they always use uh, to say what libraries are useless. Um, but I looked at the data. And a membership of these libraries have been increasing. Yeah. And in fact, down in Burrito, where they recently renovated the library, um, membership's about 100% in tenants. Yeah. People are using them. It's like a spike average. Exactly, it's like a spike average, which suggests uh, yeah, there is a social uh, need uh, and justice around that uh, for, for it to exist. <coughs> so membership is uh, increasing because people value libraries more than just the books they have provided from the access to information, which has been said. Uh, they are a place of comfort for some people, the elderly people, um, but also as, a, as one of probably very few services that we see now as citizens directly from the council. The library is a place to go to uh, to get information about the council tax, so about information about democracy, to why they uh, host all their own uh, surgeries. Uh, they're extremely important uh, for that. Um, now, uh, as, as uh, Polly was talking about, it's very important that we see the library campaign as cross political. I mean, I'm a liberal democrat, as you know. Um, but every party, in their sort of core values and their constitutions, uh, value things that libraries can provide. You know, so, so, you know, Labour and Greens, you know, they value social goods and social justice and small communities. Well, that's exactly what libraries provide. You know, the conservatives, like you say, value self determination and aspiration. But they also value, you know, conserving their community. And libraries for the 150 years have been central to our community and to our ethos as a country, as a liberal country of education. And then for my party, it's an opportunity to liberate people from poverty and to, uh, to, to provide opportunity for them. So everybody from all spectrums support libraries. And it's very important that when we bring our campaign forward, that, that we do understand that. Because ultimately, the only way that we're going to get the conservative masses to change their mind is that they feel that their seats are at risk. So we have to make sure that we are getting Conservative voters, conservative areas of the uh, borough, worried. And they should be worried because they love their libraries. So they've got grandchildren, they've got children, and they use their libraries. And we have to get it through to them that this is actually something that is beyond politics and this is so central to our community. Um, now, with the local campaign, I think it's been a very successful project we've done so far. We've managed to get nine, ten thousand people to sign our petition, and that's fantastic because not only was it uh, online. Uh, so, so that's what I was focused on when I started, but by joining up with other library community groups and getting cross parties to sign the same thing, we've shown that actually we can come together. And we need to build momentum with that, and I think joining in with other boroughs is really important. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pantomime politics about it. it's Labour's fault, it's Tories' fault, it's Labour's fault, it's Tories' fault. I mean, um, it, Nobody's a glory. No, no one's a glory. glory. And the libraries are, are a soft target because there often are people in the to defend them, and we need to make sure that we aren't there. Uh, and, and people are there to do so. Um, but I think we also need to go to the councillors uh, with ambition ourselves and, 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 and solutions ourselves. I mean, Dan, you talked about uh, the sort of lack of fiscal law from the, the opposition in Bar. And I think that there's a point to that. We do need to go to them and say, no, we can't close the libraries because this is what we can use them for in the future. Uh, and one thing I would really like to focus on. Uh, certainly with my party, and I think as a national platform we should fight on, is to bring in some primary legislation for libraries. Because the last time we had statutory uh, library regulations was 1964, I think. This is before the personal computer was even invented. You know, and information has changed in 60, 70 years. And we need to have government legislation to, um, to ensure that councils provide statutory um, access to the way that information is handled. So we need to have a minimum you know, computer or broadband inter um, access per council or something like that. I mean, this is the sort of thing that we need to see happen with our libraries. 
and also locally, we need to find solutions. The, the, council, the council and the opposition have been rather lax in terms of thinking about how our council tax is raised in the public. You know, we've had a cut on our council tax about 18 months ago, uh, promising that nothing will be happening, nothing will change. Uh, and now we're seeing our libraries being closed. Well, the library, the money that we saved, uh, the sorry, they, they spent because of our taxes to win an election, is equal to the amount of money that they're going to have to cut from our libraries. Yeah, that's almost, almost the same. And it's, um, it's a significant amount there. You know, we've talked about the Prime Minister's solution. We can talk about diverse parties. I'm sure every library campaign for a six is definitely the idea of coffee shops and, uh, and uh, hot testing. <laughs> but there is an element of, of diversifying their use. You know, they have a, a social use in terms of like, specific advice, what we see in going home. But they also have a, um, a sort of venue diversity you know, in terms of how people use and engage with the community, you know, out after out. So the things that we can do there. Um, we can look at how we, we, we fund our councillors and our advisors and how we employ people um, and the perks that they get, so there's a lot of money to be saved from that. We can put pressure on section 106. Uh, there's a lot of reasons about going on this uh, in this borough. I'm sure we've got the same in Lambeth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lots so. of redevelopments where there will be uh, essentially gentrifying areas uh, all well and good for the market. But we could be pushing more uh, more finer from the developers to build the services that we need. It's so short sighted in this in this council where we're going to see thousands of new homes in Park. In Mill Hill where I am, where I live, you've got Mill Brook, six thousand new homes being developed. But the thing about closing that library, you've got a whole village of new people, these families mainly, coming to one part of Park and who might not have a library. You know, there's not enough schools, there's no school spaces to come in as well. There's just a lack of integrated infrastructure. And I think it's very important that if we are going to develop, that they do have the services that are there. Why can't they build a new library next to this massive development work to have it all, you know, have all the services that we want? Because there's going to be thousands of people that are going to use it. Um, so yeah, so overall, we moving forward. Uh, we do need to make sure that we do continue uh, the, the bipartisan nature of this campaign, because I think that's what's really garments. It's like I put my petition up on the Lidl website, it wouldn't have got a signature. You know, the fact that we put it up uh, on a neutral territory and we all came together, you know, shows the council that, that we are all, you know, fighting for sports. I think it's very important that we do that. It's very important that we have pressure nationally. We look at how, you know, libraries are provided on a philosophical level before you know, the ideas of the international and ICT, and we do need to get our, uh, we do need to have people to voice our opinion on the street like we're doing. But we also need our councillors, our labour councillors, to actually stand up and fight for the communities as well. So it's very important that everybody does that, otherwise, this always will not be scared. Bravo. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, I think that's, that's <coughs> one of the things I hope we get some positive ideas of, of, of where we go from now. Um,